Hello, welcome to Competency Based Anatomy. I am Dr. Rachita and we shall continue with the posterior part of Norma Basalis in today's session. Posterior part extends from the anterior margin of foramen magnum and till the external occipital protuberance and superior nuchal line on the either side. In the middle, this is the large foramen called as foramen magnum. Anterior margins of foramen magnum gives attachment to anterior atlant occipital membrane and posterior margin gives attachment to posterior atlanto occipital membrane. Foramen magnum, it is a large oval shaped foramen where it has got the anterior part which is called as ligamentous compartment and posterior broader part which is called as neurovascular compartment. The contents of foramen magnum are in the from the anterior side epical ligament of dense, cruciate ligament, vertical band of cruciate ligament and membrana tectoria. From the posterior larger part, mainly the medulla oblongata, the lowest part of medulla oblongata which continues below as the spinal cord and meninges surrounding the medulla oblongata. The meninges are dura mater, the outermost is the dura mater, along with it is the arachnoid mater and along with the medulla oblongata we can see the pia mater and the space between the arachnoid and pia mater is called subarachnoid space. So the rest of the blood vessels and the nerves run in the subarachnoid space. So the blood vessels are anterior spinal artery which is single and two posterior spinal arteries and two vertebral arteries, fourth part of vertebral arteries along with its sympathetic plexus and spinal part of 11th cranial nerve. So these are the structures passing through foramen magnum. The other foramens which are present on the either side of foramen magnum are just below the condyle condyles is called as hypoglossal canal. If you put a probe, it goes into the anterior margin of foramen magnum. And just above to it, there is a very irregular shaped foramen which is called as jugular foramen. This is jugular foramen. And this is the styloid process. This is mastoid process. And the foramen between the styloid and mastoid is called as stylomastoid foramen. So let's see the structures passing through each foramen. Jugular foramen is a large irregular shaped foramen and we can divide into three parts, anterior part, posterior part which are the venous compartments and intermediate part is the nervous compartment. And from the anterior part, inferior petrosal sinus and meningeal branch of ascending pharyngeal artery will pass through. Inferior petrosal sinus is the first tributary of internal jugular vein when it comes out through the cranium. And this is the posterior part, the large vein we can see here is the internal jugular vein and along with that meningeal branch of occipital artery will pass through. From the intermediate compartment, it is called nervous compartment with three cranial nerves are passing and this is the only uh, foramen where the three cranial nerves are passing that is glossopharyngeal, ninth cranial, tenth is vagus and eleventh is spinal accessory. And there is a small bar of bone separating the jugular foramen from the carotid canal. And there is a foramen opening over this small part of bone which is called as tympanic canaliculus. Tympanic canaliculus is a foramen which is from the jugular foramen, it is opening into the internal ear. And the ninth cranial nerve, that is the glossopharyngeal nerve, gives rise to a branch which is called as tympanic branch of glossopharyngeal to enter the ear and where it divides to form tympanic plexus. And there is one more canaliculus which is present along the jugular foramen in near the internal jugular vein. This is called jugular fossa and this name of this canaliculus is mastoid canaliculus. And the mastoid canaliculus runs laterally and opens between the tympanic part and the mastoid part. And this for foramen transmits a nerve which is called as Arnold's nerve which is also called as auricular branch of vagus and initially at birth this nerve is running extracranial course later due to the development of mastoid process and the tympanic part of temporal bone and it becomes intracranial. 
Structures passing through hypoglossal canal is mainly hypoglossal nerve and structures passing through stylomastoid foramen, facial nerve and structures attached to the external occipital protuberance and crest is ligamentum nuchae and structures attached between the superior and inferior nuchal line medially gives attachment to semispinalis capitis and laterally superior oblique muscle. Below the inferior nuchal line, medially the muscle attached is rectus capitis posterior minor and laterally rectus capitis posterior major muscle. And this is the mastoid process, medially the mastoid notch, the muscle attached to the mastoid notch is posterior belly of digastric. These are the important features of posterior part of norma basalis. We shall continue with the clinical anatomy of norma basalis in my next session. Thank you.